Natush. Natusha Denunu! Y'all, we got the new Natasha Denona palette. I just got this in the mail. I also accidentally knocked it off my table, so we'll see what condition it's in when I open it. Did I even say what eyeshadow palette it is? It's the Golden Palette. I also got the Golden Glimmer Gloss that came out with this collection, and I bought this. I don't really know why, but it's this brand called Edom. You know, like, Eat them and weep. What do you do when you see a dozen oysters? Eat them. Le Chouchou Lip Softening Balm. I'm gonna put that on. When the package arrived, I had just been putting my makeup on because I was gonna film something else. So we're just gonna keep on going and we're gonna spend most of our time on the Natasha Denona Golden Palette today. So let's go ahead and jump in. Oh my God, I'm so hot. I'm so hot. I'm taking my pants off. I think I'm having a hot flash. First time period. First things first, I'm the realist. Second things first, you're not gonna see my lower half so it doesn't matter. Oh my Goodbye. Oh y'all, I'm so excited. I even made sure to grab my refer brushes because I recently discovered a new love for the Natasha Denona palettes because I started using natural bristle brushes with them. So I'm gonna open the eyeshadow palette in just a second, but let's do this lip balm. I'm working on a lip balm video. I figured I'll include this one. Ew. Why does it smell like coffee? Butter mochi. Butter Mochi! Oh my god, it smells amazing. It smells amazing. Like subtly, so subtly of like vanilla caramel coffee or something. It's so good and it's just clear and it doesn't taste like anything. She's the winner winner so far. That's a first impression. This whole video is, but that is lovely. Like I said, I'm working on a video just talking about all these viral lip balms and so every time one pops up on Sephora, I'm like, I gotta buy it. By God, they got me. But I'm glad they did because that is luxurious and I love it. Okay, pray for my palate because this room is a disaster. This light right here loves to just timber, just like fall down on me all the time. And so that's what happened. And it knocked everything off of my desk. Oh, wait, no, the Zelda music. Natush, you've outdone yourself. Oh my God, get it on my face. I'm so excited. Oh my God, it's so pretty. There are so many colors that I wanna put on my eyeballs right now. This is probably the first palette that I've seen in a long time that's like entered my collection where I'm like, it's not a quad or something where I'm like, I'm gonna use every single one of these. I guess we have to swatch them. That's how this works. <laughs> Whatever. I'll make it really fast. I guess some of these are repeats because A, why fix what ain't broke? But B, I kind of recall some of these shade names, probably from the gold palette, which I did own, but it was also blue. So that didn't really always work for me. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna swatch the shiny ones because those are the ones I care about. The rest are matte. They behave like mattes and they're pretty and they're brown and they're beige and that's fine with me. But here are the shimmers. So it's Alchemist. Fizzy, Kava, Oro, Aurum, Nubia, Aura, and Varus. Can you see it? I'm such a good makeup reviewer. Okay, I'm gonna go Kava, Orium, Alchemist. Those two, no, that's Varus. Girl, I'm just gonna go on vibes. Who am I kidding? There's never been a plan. Why would I start now, you know? Of course, I put on a brand new white shirt for this, but also the thing has already been sullied because I tried it on last night because I was so excited about it, posted about it on Instagram, and then when I took it off, my fan in my bedroom is so low because this house is like 125 years old and like, I don't know, people used to be smaller. I don't know. And I reached up as I was taking this shirt off and bopped the fan and like got a bunch of dust in the shirt and I was like, and then my period started. <laughs> Cause that's how life works. Okay, we're not gonna prime. Cause I don't want to. I think that someone told me Natasha Denona doesn't recommend priming. I'm not sure, but we're gonna start with Miko right here because it's the lightest shade and it's usually like in her palettes, the ones where I think, oh, that's not gonna show up on me. It makes a perfect transition shade for me. So Miko, 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 you're a little freak. Oh, no, you're not. It's just beige, it's fine. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. We're gonna put on some eyeshadow. Everything's about to get a lot better. Just a lot better. You know, there's like the internet and there's like terrible stuff happening. And then there is escapism. And I think that reality and escapism are both very healthy in harmony. And today I'm going to be your escapism. And I think that there are two different matte formulas because one has this kind of, you know, like a weave looking finish on it. And then these are like completely flat. So I wonder if that means that they're different formulas. 
I don't know, probably. I am not an expert on Natasha Denona. Like I said, I just came back around to her, I'm using Panna right now. I just came back around to her eyeshadow palettes. I have the My Dream palette and I also have the I Need a Nude palette. And I used to be very intimidated by this formula. I owned all of her palettes like back in the day when I first started my channel. Panna is so yellow. It's so weird because it looks like it's going to be so just like neutral beige or like creamy or whatever. And it's so yellow on me. Interesting, 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 either way. Yeah. Yeah, now I have all the confidence in the world because of my handy dandy natural brush of brushes. That's quite yellow. But I mean, we are talking about a gold palette here. Okay, let's go into sandstone because sandstone has this like green to it. And I think that that's going to lead us in the direction that this like yellow is trying to go in. I don't know if I really want to work against that. Now that it's down, I kind of want to chase that feeling. Yeah, go for the gold of it all. That's not where I thought we were gonna go today, but I think that this might be actually an even better demonstration on me specifically for people who typically watch my channel because it's a little unusual for me to not just put the brown right on my eyeball because we're going to do that. This is definitely not going to be the last time you see this palette on my channel. I bought it not because I thought it was going to be, wow, everybody's gonna love this. And like, you know, sure, great. I'm gonna buy an eyeshadow palette because I'm gonna use an eyeshadow palette. I'm McLovin' it already. It's weird. It's kind of like the Yucca palette, the way that it goes on. I don't have the Yucca palette, but it's very yellow, you know? Interesting how yellow that is. I'm gonna go in here with flesh on the same brush, see if we're going to kind of balance it out. Yes, so that's gonna be a little bit peacher, pinkier kind of thing. Okay, all right, flesh it is. Now her mattes are very pigmented. So they always look like they're going to be just like really mild and they're wild. <laughs> instead. I've been doing all these very organized videos lately and it's just about time y'all got a little bit of off the cuff chaos. Can't let that all be on Patreon, right? Those are just the mattes so far. I think the blend is obviously effortless because I'm putting in so little effort. And now that's making me think differently about the colors that I want to use on my actual eyeball because what I have on is very gold. So should we go towards the yellow? Should we go towards like Aurum? Or Oro? Ooh. <laughs> oh, Alchemist is also really gold. On the, you wouldn't think so. It looks like it's gonna be pretty brown, but what you get is mostly the shift. Wait, what does Kava look like for God's sake? Me, surprised that they're all gold. <laughs> That's why I bought it. That's Kava. I'm gonna start with Alchemist. This one right here, that one that surprised me. A lot of her colors seem to transform from the pan to the skin. That's another thing that I found a little intimidating about her formulas initially. Every time you would put a brush in a mat, you would look, do you see what that just did to a brown eye? Good grief. Pop! But yeah, every time I would stick my finger or a brush, into a matte in like the safari palette which was all matte it just it got carried away so fast because her mattes are not joking around they're so opaque they don't fluff nothing in her palettes fluffs all right so that is quite orange much more orange than i was expecting which is so interesting so i think this aura shade is absolutely bananas i think that that's where we go on the inner corner see look at that wow wow and then we'll kind of blend in between. But that's for sure inner corner, that's awesome. We're really going old school here. Just an eyeshadow tutorial. What goes around comes around and I'm glad to see it because I miss old YouTube. YouTube put this thing up, I don't know if y'all saw it on my stories, but it was like, come meet the fragrance community on YouTube or whatever. It's like, oh, finally, they're gonna like start driving traffic back towards the beauty community. And I click on it and it's like all these, like at least a year old, in some cases, multiple years old videos from like Jackie, Ina and like other people who don't really make content anymore not regularly at least on youtube and i was like perfect thanks youtube like <laughs> that's not useful at all <laughs> i'll be sure to go check those channels out let's do i'm so scared of like getting completely carried away here i'm gonna take fizzy and just blend oh yeah oh fizzy oh my god that was like delayed gratification are you kidding me this one is like that very smooth celestial type glitter but it's like more consistent than like a charlotte tilbury one or like if you think about some of the other wet look stuff like a makeup by mario etherealize or something it's more dense than that it looks like i have light shining through my eyelids it looks like they are illuminated that is awesome art always looks strange like halfway through and we're not even halfway through yet this looks pretty strange but i'm very excited about it i feel like cleopatra you know i just have like 
gold leaf on my eyes. I do wanna take that teeny tiny brush and just deepen the outer corner here. I will say, this is where Natasha Denona palettes get me in trouble, is when I start trying to work in my outer corner with a matte, they always skip. Let's see if they do. I'm going to go in with Teak. It's this one. I would go with Aria, but I think Teak, it being warmer, is gonna keep this on the rails because it's already so matte. I don't want anything that's going to appear gray. Yes, I believe that Teak was the right call. I'm being so incredibly gentle. Again, do not, especially when you're layering them, do not rely on her formulas to fluff. They are on the opposite end of the fluff spectrum to Anastasia. So if you're used to an Anastasia shadow in the way that they just fluff, or like an Aether shadow, they fluff. This does not fluff. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm really liking it with my brown eyes. Really, really liking that. I think that's another reason I'm always drawn to warm tones on my eyes is because cool tones with brown eyes on like neutral leaning warm skin, it just tends to make my eyes kind of glow red. <laughs> it's just not my thing. Like my actual irises <laughs> will kind of glow red. So that's pulling out the gold in my eyes. We're gonna go in with Alchemist, that first gold underneath my eyes. When I was first reviewing these palettes though, I was also like still oddly, if any of y'all remembers this, I was in the mindset of doing makeup like 2016 YouTube, you know? And so I was putting on fake eyelashes. I was putting mascara on my lower lash line, which is I think just a choice of how your face is proportioned. I don't think it's necessarily always a rule that it like makes you look overly made up or it's good or bad, but it makes me look very made up in a hurry. So I have not done that in a very long time. I never put lower lash mascara on and yeah, right. You'll never catch me in a pair of false eyelashes unless I'm like, a bride. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know when that would come up. So anyway, a little bit of Kava, which I think is like a lot of people's favorite shade, right? I've heard a lot of people talk about how they love Kava. It's been in a lot of palettes, I think. And I think it's just like a crowd pleaser and for good reason. And then I will go for Aura, the kind of silvery white here underneath right there. And I'm being very gentle a little bit of fizzy, which is that celestial. Yeah. And just blow that up. Nice. Yeah, with that much color on my lids and above, I just couldn't leave it off of my lower lash line. I've gotten so much better at doing eyeshadow. <laughs> The amount of times that I used to have to quit in the middle of a Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette review and go wash my face. <laughs> and this is just blending so beautifully. I mean, obviously it is the brushes, but it's also just having been doing this long enough. I'm gonna do a little more outer corner here. I feel like they're a little uneven. This is teak that I'm going in with. And I just, I'm kind of, if you're unfamiliar with my typical diagram of how I do my eye makeup, I'm always pulling my eyes bigger and farther apart by making kind of an artificial crease out here here, just obscuring the edge of my eyelid and making it just be like, oh no, for sure, those are definitely farther apart and bigger. And honestly, where I learned that, the Kardashians, by way of Wayne Goss, because he does tutorials that are focused on like celebrities makeup and stuff. But between him and then just observing Kylie Jenner, oddly enough, because Kylie Jenner also, you would never know it, but she has smaller eyes that she makes them look so enormous that like, I was like, all right, I'll try whatever she's doing. Okay, I mean, I think it's quite evident that we're going to put on brown eyeliner, mascara, brows. I think that that's going to be absolutely delicious. Let's go in with like 12 different bronzers, okay? So let's start with the Makeup by Mario. I'm gonna put it on that gigantic brush that I'm so obsessed with, my BK105. Khaki Town at checkout. <laughs> Speaking of YouTube 2016, this is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. I love this stuff. <laughs> I love this stuff so much. I wish he would make these in a contour as well. The blushes that he made in this end didn't really work for me because I'm more of a blush girly than that, but a contour would be great. Although you could argue he did. And that is this right here. So this is fair. And that's what I'm gonna use for my contour. I'm thinking about y'all. 
spitballing. Let me know what you think about this, but I'm thinking about doing a video where I show the difference that I'm talking about between high contrast and low contrast complexions because I wanna show you what it looks like and it's not like doing it right versus wrong or something, but like what a high contrast look looks like on me being someone who has a low contrast complexion and then how I adjust it to achieve the exact same look on myself, but in a way that's easier for me to wear because of my complexion's contrast. Let me know if that would be valuable for y'all because I really think that it is one of the best kept secrets of the makeup industry. And it's why when a lot of times, like especially back on you know, old school YouTube, we used to watch tutorials and then we would follow them to a T. We would buy the same colors and everything in them and then we would put them on. And we'd be like, I look unhinged. <laughs> like, I, this does not look like me. I cannot leave the house like this. What happened? And it's usually because the person who you are following their tutorial has a different contrast complexion than you do. Um, more bronze. More bronze, I say. Also, I want to try the lip gloss because I want to see what it looks like because then we can decide on how I want to do my blush. I'm thinking I want to do Glossier Sale. You know, it's not just because of the meme that I use this. I actually love it. It's such a good bronzer. Okay, I'm gonna do my eyeliner and my mascara and my brows. We're gonna come back and put on the lip and then I'll decide what I wanna do with my blush, okay? Okay. because we don't have any blush on yet. But let's do the lip, by the way, the Edom. Am I saying that right? I don't really know if there's any other option to how you would pronounce that, but lovely, lovely. I don't smell it anymore, but the smell was so lovely when I was putting it on. And I do like this and it's present, but it's sunk in. So it still looks glossy, but it's not slippy anymore. It's very much bonded to my lips in a really nourishing feeling way. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. And it comes in colors too. She comes in colors everywhere. She combs her hair. She's like a rainbow. It's my theme song. Okay, wow. Wow. Ooh, my lips feel so good. <laughs> my lips feel so good. Oh my gosh. Okay. New first impression favorite. Here she is. No. Look, oh my God, look how pretty. Oh my God, look how pretty. Oh my God, look how pretty. This is one of those videos where it's like, am I really reviewing anything or am I just freaking excited? I didn't know what to expect with that. So, oh, woo, she's gonna plump. So let's find out. It's spicy smelling. Let's see if it's gonna change the color of my lips. That's the question. A nice formula. You can feel the glitter, but it's not too much. It's still a good syrupy formula. Pretty, very flexible doe foot. Like, feels really gentle. I'm not feeling any heat yet. So let's put on some blush. Since that's clear, and so you're just gonna see my lip color through it, I think we have to go for my lip color in the form of a blush. Starting to feel a little bit of a tingle. Oh, starting to feel a tingle! Starting to tingle! Uh-oh, uh-oh, I might be matching a red lip instead of a purple one. Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh no, look at my lips turning red, oh no! <laughs> it's like the Gucci, oh no. Yeah, I mean, it's plumping. Oh, get it, make sure it's only on my lip lines because it'll turn anything red that it touches. And it's not like pH color dressing, it's like inflaming my lips. Okay, that's gonna change the plan on the blush. I think that's gonna be the answer. I think this is kind of mimics. <laughs> Oddly enough, the color that my lips are about to turn is this color from LYS called Focused. I just ordered. Yeah, I think that's gonna really do it. <laughs> oh my God, I don't like it. Ah! This is a review. Just as I said that, I was like, what could go wrong? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is, I just ordered some of the old LYS blushes because I want to refresh my memory on them because I remember really liking them. And we are back in this conversation of talking about like satin finish cream blushes. The words are just not coming to me. Thought I was going to film two videos today. 
absolutely not. Absolutely not. I have overdrafted at the talking bank. So, all right, there is focused. I think that's gonna get the job done. The thing that I love the most about, well, I mean, I love the formulas too, but LYS puts out colors that are different. They're hard to put your finger on. They're kind of like hourglass like that, where you're like, I don't, I can't explain it. Can't explain it, but it works, you know? And so they end up being one and done instead of me thinking really hard about the color theory. I'm just like, oh, I like that color. You know what I mean? Put it on my face. It's like idiot proof which is fantastic and affordable, which is also fantastic. Yeah, my lips are big and pink. And the problem with that is, and this is with everyone, right? Inflammation, because that is what is happening on my lips right now, inflammation calls out other inflammation, even if it's underneath your makeup. That color is going to make your eye go to the other things that are that color, i.e. my blemishes. That's not cool. You know what I mean? Like that kind of sucks. I'm bearing with it because I know that I should, but like, I don't like it. I, we need some powder. I'm gonna do a little bit of the Natasha Denona highlighter as well. All right, I wanna use the Hourglass because I, I think that like a lot of what's happening here is just that like the opacity is different in different parts of my face and it's not looking finished. Also, I look terrible in a pink lip, so that's gonna really ruin things, isn't it? I gotta take that off. It just looks bad. I mean, I'm not unhappy with the blush. I feel like that's still just a really pretty kind of sunburny color, but like, I'm very, very unhappy with that lip. I don't know. I have a little bit of complexion product left on this little brush, and I'm just gonna put that around my lips, kind of try and calm everything down, and I'm just gonna put that Edom back on. I'm gonna do a little bit of the Natasha Denona High Gen highlighter here. It's so pretty. Adds a little bit of a celestial kind of coolness. Okay, and then yeah, we're gonna put the Edom back on because screw them. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm over it. <laughs> I hate that. There's like two ways to really piss me off. One, pH color adjusting, and the other, like so spicy that my lips change color and it doesn't matter what the freak color it is. Oh, butter mochi. I swear every time you use this, you're gonna smell it and it's subtle, but it's so wonderful. Ooh, it's so nice. And a little metal applicator above and beyond. I really like this one. Okay, let's talk final thoughts here. I mean, I think it's pretty evident how I feel about this eyeshadow palette because, well, <laughs> a lot of these colors aren't new. And also, I bought a Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette, knowing full well how a Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette performs. And it performs great. And also, I would say, <laughs> this is such a cold take, but like, I was surprised by how cold these are. <laughs> I don't mean I'm surprised in concept. I mean that like some of them don't look as gold in the pan as they are when you put them on your fingers or put them on your skin. So just, you know, looking at like Nubia or Kava or Alchemist, like you don't think that they're gonna be super gold because they're sitting next to these like yellow golds in the pans. So when you see that, you're like, oh, if it's not that bright yellow, it's going towards something, you know, more muted and maybe even like rosy. They're still gold. They're still really gold. Shocking to me and only me. But I think it's awesome that she came out with a palette that is purely gold because I think that the gold palette originally with all the blue in it was a little polarizing, a little hard to use. It was of a time and this is very much of this time. This to me feels very updated. It feels very current and I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. And you know what? Long live eyeshadow. I am so sick of people being like, eyeshadow's dead. Guess what? You don't have to wear it like we did in 2014, but it's still fun to have. I think that the world could benefit from more sparkle and there are only so many places that society deems appropriate for us to wear sparkle on a regular basis, okay? And our eyes are one of them, so let's freaking go. <laughs> Big fan of the eyeshadow palette. It's also not an enormous one. I don't even remember what the enormous ones felt like because this is so big. This feels so big now, but this one's only 60 something, $69, $60, $70, something like that. Whereas, you know, the big ones are 125. I don't think she's put out one of those in ages. I can't even remember. I want to say that the original gold palette was enormous. They were huge, right? Oh my God, I'm not well. Okay, home run. Run do not walk. Unless you hate the smell of butter mochi, then like don't do it. But like, wow, lovely. Don't, don't do it. Don't do this. Don't do this to me anymore, brands. It's just, it's frustrating. I am not willing to put up with my lips changing color with a clear lip gloss just for the sake of plumping because there are other plumping ingredients that do a really good job that don't do that. I know people don't love a minty plump, but like the Bobbi Brown ones are apparently plumping and so are the House Labs ones and they don't have any sensation. I'm not a chemist, but I don't think that this ceremony is necessary. And I don't 
like being surprised by it, okay? I mean, I'm sure that if I had like, you know, read deeply enough, I would have found that out before I bought it. I'm sure a lot of people are screaming at their screen being like, Gaggy, if you would have just done a little bit more research. Here's the thing. The way that I got this palette was, it was on early access on Sephora and then it sold out and I talked to customer service and I was like, why can't I add it to cart? And she was like, it's sold out for early access. You know, we'll put it back on sale, you know, when it releases, but it's on early access right now. And that part sold out. And then some freaking goddess came to my comments absolutely apropos of nothing. I did not mention my issue with it, like trying to check out. I didn't even talk about it since it's released that morning. Person comes into my comments and goes, hey, if you put it on your favorites on Sephora, then you can add it to cart and you can check out. And it worked. So I felt like I was getting by. I was like driving it like I stole it. And so like, did I check to see all of the claims on the lip gloss before I hit checkout? No. <laughs> So it might be on me. Anyway, look forward to seeing more of this palette on my channel. That was the first impression. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, please. If you're new here and you want to, I don't know, if you're new here and you like this, subscribe while you're here. We have a lot of fun. I'll put a video up here that I think you'll enjoy. If you like this one, Read into that all you want, it doesn't mean anything. Thank you to all of my subscribers, all of my patrons, all of the people who like and comment. I love you so freaking much. Keep my comment section as beautiful as it is currently. It is a lovely, lovely place, a sanctuary on the internet. Please don't pollute it. And I will hopefully see y'all in the next one. Bye.